Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the Epta Craft Shop. Jason here, uh, getting ready to do a nice little project today. Uh, what a beautiful morning it is outside here after a terminally hot weekend, hot and humid. So we're back down to seasonal temperatures, nice sunny morning with a cool breeze. And uh, yeah, outside the shop, kind of pre-sizing a piece of material before I bring it indoors. What we're gonna be doing today <clears throat> and over the course of the next few days is building a live edge slab coffee table. Now this is actually being done for a gift. So I won't be posting this video until after the gift is given, but I figured I'd catch some footage here of the process. And uh, what you're gonna see is a similar treatment with this top to a project I did probably a little over a year or so ago. I forget the exact date, but if you want to, <clears throat> I'll leave a link up on the top corner here to that video where I built a, um, a live edge slab bench for my front porch. So today I'm gonna follow a similar design for the top, but we'll do a different treatment for the legs. So let me walk you through what I've done so far this morning. I'll turn the camera around. First, just want to say pardon me in case uh, I end up sniffling or clearing my throat a few times during this video. Uh, pollen is out in full swing this morning, so um, I wouldn't say I have allergies, but by the same token, with this much pollen in the air, occasionally uh, I end up feeling it. So anyways, got a nice, probably started out as around a 26 inch wide by a little, by about a two and a quarter inch thick slab. That's red oak clear nice straight grain no notch so without leaving it fully raw edge what I've done here is I have just taken a straight edge and knocked the corners off of this slab Let's see if I can get around to this other side because the lighting and I think what you'll see here is that you see the bark and the shape from the, uh, the live edge but I picked a point where I could just strike a straight line and use a track saw to give us a straight edge to work with just for the sake of what your knee might bump into and make it comfortable that way while not completely losing the look of the live edge. So where right now these are square corners, probably just gonna knock that down with a uh, very um, small bevel or quarter round just to make it easy to work with and nice on the hands and your pant legs when you walk by it so that you won't get any splinters or any um, discomfort from that. So this is one side and this is the side where you see primarily the uh, clear grain wood only. I'm going to flip it over and show you the bottom side or what could end up being the top side. I haven't decided which one's going to be the top yet because personally I like the look of the bark and the bark is uh, fully adhered and so it's potential that the other side of this board could be used. So here you can see the other side of the board. And on this side, of course, you can definitely see a lot more of the bark, but you still have that straight-ish feel to the overall top surface, which again will make it for a nice top, kind of a blend of a clean cut and live edge treatment on this. A little undecided at the moment, I'm gonna work with it a bit more and I'm gonna finish the top and bottom the same way so that I don't have to make that decision yet. And here's another look at the other side where there's a bit more bark. I don't know, I know that there's plenty of people who like to take the bark off. I understand that, but where this bark is so fully adhered I don't know, I'm tempted to leave it just because I like that texture and character that comes with that look. So I've been giving this some more thought this morning and uh, double checking some of my dimensions. After having uh, done my cross cutting and ripping, the slab ends up finishing out at about 20 inches in width. Uh, reconfirming the area where this table is likely going to end up, the 20 inch width is probably too wide just to allow for walking room around the table. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to try something that I've seen before with some of the other crafters and makers on on the internet is I am going to rip this slab right down the middle. Actually, I'm just going to rip probably a four inch um, piece of material right out of the middle of it. And then I'm going to take the remaining pieces on either side and I'm going to turn them around so that the bark faces each other in the middle of the table. And so then the outer edges of the table will be cut edges, which I can then round, bevel, and finish um, without losing the effect of the live edge and the bark on the table as a whole. So stick with me and let's see how this thing turns out. Okay, so again, in the absence of a track saw, I've got a nice six foot level and some wood clamps here that I'm using for um, a track saw replacement. So let's go ahead and make this rip cut with my skill saw. Okay, so starting out with an original piece of material that was just over 20 inches wide, what I wanted to do was, was end up with a top that was only going to finish out at say 16 or 17 inches wide. So I had to take 3 inches, inches of material off just to get to that dimension. Then I wanted to take some more material out so that when I take the two bark boards and face them that there would be an air gap between them. So my layout ended up resulting in a piece of material six inches wide being taken out of the middle. It has the added benefit of now giving me a piece of material that I can use in um, putting together the legs and the substrate for this table as far as stretchers, legs, and other things to keep it straight and solid. So win-win <clears throat> all around, I think. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, so here are the pieces. They're all dusted off and have been reoriented so that the two bark sides face each other. Here, I just dropped my tape. What I want to do is kind of lay these pieces out in such a way that we get a, a pleasing air gap between the boards and end up with a uniform width across um, the length of the, the board, the, the, the tabletop. So right now, the two boards, as they sit, outside to outside comes to about 15 inches. I think I want it to finish out at 16. So I think what I'll just do is orient these boards roughly at the moment to 16 inches apart. Outside edge to outside edge. Okay, 15 and three quarter. Just give her a little skosh. All right, we're, we're ballpark. Doesn't have to be exact yet. Okay, the other benefit when cutting this slab out is I cut it overly long. I wanted some options on finished length. I think what we're gonna do is where we started out at a four and a half foot length, I think for the sake of ease of use in a kind of a small space, we're gonna drop it back to three foot six overall length. So that, as you can see, the boards are not fully in line with each other lengthwise. I'm going to slide these uh, laterally in relation to each other until I can get a good match of the, uh, the bark profiles. And as long as the short end on one side to the short end on the other end of the other piece finishes out at 42 inches or more, then that will be where we land these pieces once and for all and um, get them to where we can now build a base under them.